Uh, the road itself is very difficult. It's just about impassable. The only way to get there is just by sheer strength and willpower. You have to be men. Only Moses could have made it through this road. The Congo is a building site. You have to learn how to drive along the building site. Our life is about hitting. We're great hitters. Life here is all about suffering. Look at the state of this road. We're traders who have to sell our merchandise elsewhere. We have to get through whatever it takes in order to make a living. Despite the hardships, we'll make it. We'll get through. Things are hopping at the road terminus in Lubumbashi, in the Congo. Traders throng around the only available transport, hoping to get a lift to sell their goods in the town of Bukama. Hey, mind my stuff, will you? It's fragile. Put it up straight. Have you put the contact numbers on? Eugene is one of the few truckers willing to risk the notorious road. The metal rods are sticking out far too far. The bundles of goods are carefully positioned. Wasting space on board means less money for Eugene. Move this case over there. Put this one that way. The fees are based on the bulk of the goods themselves. That foam there, that's 12,000 francs. Three kilos and by their weight. How much is that? 40 kilos. The price is about a dollar a kilo, and it's non-negotiable. Is that the lightest one? No, I'm telling you, it's 40. I decide the prices based on the charges I have to pay for parking. Well, you're the boss, Eugene, but we have to pay a lot. What about giving us a break? The road is really bad. That's why my transportation costs are high. I need to make some money. So with any heavy bundle, I charge 15 or 20,000 francs. I need the money to buy another truck. The vehicles last for maybe three, four or five years. But it could break down in a month or a year or two. You never know. The road is merciless, taking a heavy toll on the trucks. Many have more than a million kilometers on the clock, but Eugene's truck is relatively new. It only has notched up 700,000 kilometers. It's not really new, it's second-hand from Europe. But out here, that's what we call new, anything from Europe. Eugene's insurance comes in the form of his driver, Domingo. We almost forgot the crowbar. You never know when we might need it for a puncture. Eugene pays him a small fortune, $300 a trip, three times the average salary in the Congo. Push, push. Domingo's unquestionably worth his wages. He's considered one of the best drivers around. And after using the road for 10 years, he knows it well. Make sure the lids are all on tight. Here, change this lid. There's 170 litres of fuel in reserve. In the middle of the bush, there are no petrol stations. To top up his income, Eugene has sold off 10 places to passengers on top of his truck. There's no bus service, and once again, he decides what the fees are. 
$20 one way. <laughs> I don't know why we have to pay so much on such an awful, dangerous road. That's just the way it is. Before each trip, Eugene hands over a fistful of money to Domingo, who handles the petty cash, to cover his meals and for any contingencies along the way. But a Congolese franc is a Congolese franc. We'll get the rest of it after, but this is what the passengers have paid for. That's it? That, that's all they've paid? Well, what do you mean? Come on, put all the money down. Let's, let's do this properly. The road is risky, so I need 15,000. 12,000. It's not enough. <coughs> Gather round, everyone. And let's pray to God that the journey goes well. Eugene never leaves without first receiving the village priest's blessings. Our father, we thank you for this journey. And we beseech you to protect us along the way, at the start and at the end. It's a path that man cannot make on foot. Protect them from accidents and preserve their lives, and assist them against the natural and the supernatural throughout the journey. Even if this is a man-made vehicle, please take it under your wing. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes. Start the engines. How long will it take you to get to Bukama? Oh, I think it'll we'll be there in four days. Four days of torture for those who have put their trust in Eugene's truck, nicknamed the Facochère, or Warthog, after the animal that lives in the bush. Eugene counted 11 passengers in all, but only 10 have paid. He stops the truck and soon discovers one passenger has smuggled on board his fiancée. Listen, I run a tight ship here. She has to get off. Well, who's going to pay for her? I'll take care of it. Fine, OK, she stays. She might be his fiance. I don't know. But things have to be clear here. I need to know who's on board and make sure the list is correct and that they've paid. It's a question of money. I can't just take whoever wants to get on board. If there's an accident, I'm responsible. It's not a bus, you know. For the first 50 kilometers, the road is paved. Warthog trundles along at a steady 40 kilometers an hour. Later, the road becomes a dirt track. No more towns, just villages, and the average speed drops to barely 20 kilometers an hour. The going gets tough. Incredibly, the road was once actually paved. Four decades ago, but after years of neglect, nature in the form of tropical rains and furnace-like heat has repossessed the ground. Eugene, who knows the road well, the dirt track poses no surprises. No, we're fine, we can carry on, we're cool. The driver isn't too concerned either, he's calm. Six hours into the trip and they've covered 80 kilometers. Time to stop for some food and at the last village before the real challenges of the jungle begin. Share out the sugar cane. Money, please. Money. Don't you think this is bad? 
Just wait, you'll see. It gets much, much worse. The driver has to be careful. An accident can happen at any time. The slightest risk, the slightest lapse, or distraction, and bang, you'll have an accident for sure. And that's why all the drivers that use this road are professionals, experienced. You have to be. This is not a road anyone can manage. The first difficulties soon appear. The rainy season has ended, but the downpours have taken a terrible toll, leaving huge holes filled with mud. Domingo has to maneuver the 15-ton truck with great care. You have to be gentle with the gears and the steering. That's the secret. Plus, stay really focused. hard way to make a living. I take huge risks whenever I buy a truck. You see, uh, with this kind of road, it doesn't matter if the trucks are new or second-hand. Everything is unpredictable. Even the lifespan of a truck in conditions like these. The truck can break up after just two trips. Even with the best driver, you're always just one step from disaster. You're right. We come across trucks that have got stuck in the mud at night time and will spend more time on this road than planned. That's right. That means delays. Easy does it, I say. Yeah, that's right. Easy does it. God willing. But God has other plans. Almost from the start, Warthog is falling behind schedule. They should have covered 300 kilometers, but so far they've made just 150. Eugene and Domingo decide to drive through the night, despite the danger. We've never driven this part at night because it's quite a risk. Trucks can easily get stuck here. We've pushed our luck along these past seven kilometers, but we owe it to our customers to make up the delay. We never drive after six, usually. It's for their sake this time. 23 hours on the road. Time to take a break at the small village of Kanzese, where a party is in full swing. Uh, apparently there's a, a wake. Someone from the village has died. That's the way they do funerals here. You okay? Can we join you? Sure, the more the merrier. Morning is done by candlelight. There's no electricity out here. The men are dancing in honor of the memory of Papa Kahumba, a village headsman, who died three days earlier. It's a straightforward tradition. In the Congo, death is greeted with smiles. Stopping with these people, we have to share in their, in their grief, because that's the way it's done in Africa. Africans are a community. Africans share things. It's by association. When there's a drink, we drink. When there's singing, we sing. Then in the morning, we say goodbye.
After a few hours sleep, it's time to press ahead. One of the worst stretches of track lies ahead. 500 kilometers to go to Bukama. On this part of the road, the potholes can be as deep as three meters. To negotiate the track, Eugene uses three scouts to plot a route past the holes. Bijou and Elephant hang on to the outside of the truck, acting as spotters for the driver. This part is tricky. But when it comes to the hardest stretches of road, everyone has a different opinion. Domingo wants to go that way along the edge. You've seen the plants over there and where the water is? It's a death trap. You're wasting your time. I think we should go around. You keep saying go through the middle. But uh, it's okay, the high wheelbase will see us through. Don't listen to them. I think you can get through. Go, go by the side. As a precaution, Domingo asks the passengers to get off the truck. It's overloaded and, more worryingly, unbalanced by the huge amount of goods it's transporting. It could tip over at any moment on the uneven surface. Once the truck is on its way, Domingo cannot afford to stop for fear of the vehicle getting bogged down. Passengers follow on foot. Life here is all about suffering. Look at the state of this road. It's like this every day. All we do is suffer. The truck goes ahead and we have to follow on foot. The road gets eroded more and more. Hey you, white man, when you go home, tell them to help rebuild our roads. It's like a calvary, this road. Didn't think we'd have to walk. You'll see, you'll get feet of iron. It's endless, this trip. If it's like this all the way, we'll have to go on foot. It's a crap road. Come on, you can do it. Seven kilometers later, and the passengers can finally board the truck again. We've made it through one of the worst parts. Sure, you can say that again. Eugene is proud of his driver. I didn't think we could do it, to be honest. Now we know what's behind us. It was slippery, very slippery. You know, only Moses could have got through easily. Yeah, it's a tough one, chum. It's worse than bad. Once we left Lubumbashi, there's no way we can stop. There's no choice. We're in the thick of it now. I say, bring it on. The truck's good, so don't panic. We'll make it through. Just need the strength to do it. Over the next few days, Domingo and his team will do their utmost to prevent the warthog from getting bogged down. The track is in such a poor state that it takes Eugene's truck all day to cover just 25 kilometers. 
if hell has a road, then this surely must be its equal. At times, the truck can barely make two kilometers an hour. They left Lubumbashi nine days ago and have so far covered just 250 kilometers. There are still 400 to go. Perched on the truck, the passengers are at their wits' end. A ferocious wind whips the warthog, but Eugene seems unconcerned by their complaints. Eugene, you don't care about us, do you? Well, why should I? We'll make it, don't worry. We're packed like sardines up here. Well, that's your place. You knew that before we started. We could die for all you care. All the driver has to do is take us to our destination. Eugene promised it would take only four days. Anyway, let's hope we get there in one piece on this truck that's crawling. We're treated as badly as the assistants. I've got business to do in Bukama. Everyone should do their work properly. To give everyone a break, Eugene makes a stop for supplies. Drinking water and a chance to make sure none of the nuts and bolts on the warthog have come loose. The truck has been sorely tried. So too have the passengers, who are now days behind schedule. Show me that. And some seem to have been thinking ahead. Look at that. He's got a ton of fufu. Fufu is the local staple, bread made from corn flour. I got meat too. Mama Mizula's restaurant is famous throughout the bush. The track is vital for her and the local economy. I depend on this road for business, and it's what keeps the village going. If the road gets any worse and people can't use it, that means I won't be able to send my kids to school. Right now I can save up for their studies. If they could only surface the road properly, then that would be great for all of us here in the village, and there'd be no more chance of the travelers getting stuck in the mud. That way the vehicles would be passing through the whole time, which is what we dream of. Domingo signals it's time to go, but Mama Mizula chases after him. He and his three assistants haven't paid for their meal. Hey, hey, you, you need to pay me. You told me to wait, but now you have to pay. No, you don't think so? You're not going to give me any money? You lied to me, Eugene. You're leaving without paying. And if you leave without paying, Domingo, I'll be broke. Six days behind schedule, Domingo and the others have already spent all their petty cash. And the driver suggests that Eugene forks out for the meals. Eugene, your driver owes this woman money. Pay for him, and the matter's closed. You were eating at the other table. You didn't see what had happened. Well, look, look sorry, it's got nothing to do with me. You're the boss. You're responsible. Speak to them, at least. Listen, just pay the woman, OK? Well, who's going to pay me back? Well, your driver and the security guys will. I told them to eat. Now they'll find a way to pay with the money I've already given them. The driver left with over 2,000 francs. He'll pay next time he passes through. No, 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 no. You're leaving, and, and then what? You think I'll see him again tomorrow or something? It's nothing to do with me. In the end, Eugene convinces her to wait for her money until the next time they pass by. After 300 kilometers of potholes and dozens of hours of being shaken, 
there's an unwelcome surprise. The warthog loses a key component of its suspension, which breaks off. This is the part that's broken. Take a look over there. There. Give me the wrench. Wherever there's real work, uh, you're never around, are you? Domingo is upset. Now they'll be delayed even more. Come on, guys, hurry up. What, you're tired just from changing a tire? It'd be easier if the passengers got off. Well, where's the bloody wrench then? Yeah, it's right next to you where you threw it. The spotters fill in as mechanics and can repair just about anything. They're paid $50 a month, a basic salary for intensive labor that Elephant finds acceptable since it allows him to both feed 12 members of his family and hope his dream will come true. Me, I want to become a driver. After six years of security work and spotting, I've learned about mechanics, how to do maintenance, and I know all about trucks. I'm happy. I make a good living. And one day I hope to become a good driver, just like Domingo. Then I can provide for my parents and my family. Everyone settles down for a long wait. Almost midnight, and the crew have been trying to fix the problem for more than five hours. We're working, we're working, we're here trying to find a solution. So we can fix it and get on the road again. We need to improvise, make things up. Just find a way out of here and repair the breakdown. Moving on would be good, but that's Africa for you. It's the Congolese way. It could take days, because without spares, we'll need to try to figure out everything by ourselves and how to fix this. And then we should be off again. Eugene, who had expected the journey to take four days, now has to face up to the fact that they've been on the road for 12 days, and they're still only halfway there. A few kilometers from the stricken warthog is the mining region of Kolwezi. Each parcel of land, each hill, belongs to foreign companies. Chinese, Indian, American are all here for the copper and the cobalt. Cobalt is a highly prized mineral these days, as it's used in cell phone batteries. A broken down truck blocking the transportation of the mineral on the only road in the region is unacceptable. To solve the problem, the mining companies are pulling out all the stops. Some are losing patience, so a four-wheel drive vehicle tries its luck from the lower side of the track. Well, well done, the foreigners. They don't know how to do anything. I told them not to go that way. Well, they brought it on themselves. They were stupid. I showed them the way. They just weren't interested. Ah, oh, fine, leave them. They'll spend the night stuck out here, then. They're used to motorways. They can't handle conditions like these. They're not good at driving in the country. The whole of Congo is a building site. 
Our roads are completely dilapidated. We've asked the government and the foreigners to help finance development. Because roads are the first step in any real growth. It takes two hours to get the vehicle out of the mud. Among the foreign company's highly mechanized pits is an old cobalt mine, which the government has recently given to the Congolese people. 4,000 miners flock to the site to chance their luck, with rudimentary equipment, at best a crowbar, but usually with their bare hands. Many are willing to risk their lives to strike it rich. The Bible says in order to eat, you have to work. Whoever does not work will not eat. That's why we're working here. It's like being in the army. We just make do with what we have. As Mobuto used to say, whatever will be, will be. If it does collapse, I'm a goner. If it doesn't collapse, I'll make a bit of money and then I'm out of here. Twenty people work 25 meters below ground in a gallery dug out by hand. The heat is unbearable. <laughs> people died down here in the past. But God is keeping an eye on us now. Everyone gets on with their work and so far it's safe. We'll all get out again alive and get together in the village. <laughs> Each day they remove a ton of ore from deep below ground in 50 kilo sacks. Fiston, age 27, and his brother Kirigol, age 22, have been here for just three weeks. They've already dug down 10 meters. God will protect us today. Come on, Kirigol, let's dig for our share to get our Kalolo. Who am I going to complain to? goes the song. You fooled me. What can I do? You left my love. Mama Kayembe. You betrayed me. Avoiding this burden would be wrong. My father wanted me to be a Christian and go to school. But when I saw what money could do, I said, learning French is all well and good, but it won't put food on my plate. Money will. In 1996, I went off to work in Angola digging for diamonds, red sand, quartz and emeralds, and for what they call blue sky. Our life is just about hitting. We're great hitters really brave. And we're patient. They buy this off us cheap, telling there's little cobalt. We won't sell this to the Chinese. I don't like them. They rip us off. While some half kill themselves trying to make a living, others have taken an easier way out. 
Jean-Claude is a missionary, spreading the word of God in several African nations. To boost the mission's coffers, he's hired three miners, whom he watches closely. I'm a servant of God. I used to trade diamonds when I was in Angola. Then I heard the voice of God telling me to stop. I did, and came here to the Congo to work as a missionary. A friend suggested I come to the mines. There are problems here. God's business has many problems. They need faith. So the pastors have become adventurers, which is why we need to have our own resources. We get by by doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We dig, and we have people that dig for us. Then we sell off the minerals to the large companies that are here. It's in Kawama, a short distance away, that the miners sell the cobalt ore. The buyers are largely Chinese or Indians, who pay two dollars apiece for the 50 kilo sacks. What the miners don't realize is that the same ore will be resold in the markets at Shanghai or New Delhi for 200 times as much. I, Fiston Mahimba, my younger brother Kirigol, are being exploited. We sell our product here because we have no other choice. We work 12 hours a day. The worker has to eat all the same. We can't afford to rest. We might get only 1,000 francs a bag. And if you have a family and kids, well, that's nothing. Here, a beer costs 1,500 francs. So if you can sell three sacks, you might be doing okay. And you need to sweat blood to fill three sacks. But you have to think of your kids. It's hard. It's very hard. Three months earlier, the village of Kawama, on the road that leads to Bukama, only had 650 inhabitants. Today, because of the mines, the population has increased tenfold and makes do with what shelter it can find. When Fiston and Kirigol first arrived, and while they were waiting to find a concession and start earning some money, the pastor put them up in the town's old church. I have nothing, just my blanket and, and this prayer mat down here. Often when you've been digging, the tunnel can collapse. We must pray to the good Lord because it's the Lord that will protect us. Which is why we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And we give thanks to God and, and then we smoke. We smoke so as not to be afraid. If you smoke that, your fears will vanish. Despite all the millions of people that will die, if they say your neighbor has died, you'll still be alive. Without shame, without fear, without pity even. That's why we do it. Come and see the great master, the great smoker, Fiston Mahimba. Each hard-earned penny is soon spent on drugs to make their lives more bearable. This way, so it goes straight to the brain. The life spent hammering away at the rocks in the hope of striking it rich one day. Eugene and his companions pass through the village where Fiston and Kirigol live without stopping. There's no time to waste. 
They lost another three days repairing the truck. They've now been on the road for two weeks and are still barely halfway to their destination. The voyage has turned into a nightmare. The truck moves along at a snail's pace. The odyssey becomes surreal. In the middle of the bush, a traffic jam. A dozen or so trucks in single file, waiting to move on. Did you bring me any presents? Hang on, we'll see. You see what's in front? The vehicle's got stuck fast. To get through, you'll have to go this way. The truck's been stuck for three days. The driver has unloaded all its cargo in a desperate effort to extricate his vehicle. When you see colleagues in trouble like this, we stop and try and help each other. Uh, the best way that we can. But you still have to look after number one. And that's the case now, as Domingo tries whatever means he can to bypass the obstruction. Any feelings of solidarity with a trapped driver are put aside. But he risks getting bogged down himself. Eugene can't get over it. He may be a mean businessman, but he's full of admiration for his driver. He's a trooper, a real road fighter. What skill! Everyone admires him. Of all the crews, none can even begin to compare with us. You mean Domingo? Yeah, of course. You think he's here just for the fun of it? He's got the heart of a lion, I tell you. He's great! Galvanized by Domingo's success, the other drivers chance their luck. victory too soon, as just a few kilometers further down the road, there are another dozen trucks, and all of them have become trapped in the mire. The drivers are going for broke. The blue truck has to be moved. Out in the bush, it's all a matter of being resourceful. It's, you know, it's the vehicle itself that's the problem here. Uh, it's in a dreadful state, it's overloaded, and its engine just can't hack it. And we need to pool our resources and get everyone to work for the common good. That's the only way we're going to get through. Everyone, without exception, that's what has to be done here. Everyone has their own solution, however bizarre. You need to empty that water that's over there, this way.
See, put it from that hole into this one. Eventually, a plan is agreed on. Watching the spectacle unfold, Eugene is concerned some of the passengers haven't any food. Some trucks have been stuck here for 11 days. No, we're afraid of hunger, not having food. We still need to eat in order to work. Well, we know the challenges of the road. We, we knew we had to do it, even though it's not the easiest way to transport people or goods. Despite their best efforts, Eugene, Domingo and the rest of the drivers will remain stuck in the mud for another two weeks. The journey that should have taken four days will eventually take the warthog a month. A month to cover the 650 kilometers to Bukama. We'll need a really strong chain and attach it here. Have you got one? No. I haven't got one, no. Okay. Domingo, how long do you think it'll take to get to Bukama? Oh, I think about four days should do it. 